Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Dorsak and today I'm going to share with you my April plan with me setup and I'm so excited because it's all about spring. I decided to go with tulips as my theme this month because it's one of my favorite flowers and I just wanted something related to the season and I just love how it turned out. I even used a little bit of color which you're gonna be surprised because I usually just do black and white, a little bit of gold, a little bit of silver but this month I decided to incorporate a little bit of a blush color. I love how it turned out and I hope you like it too. Yeah let me know what you think about it down in the comments and um, yeah this video is kind of sponsored by Skillshare and I can't wait to share more about them later on in this video so stay tuned and yeah without further ado let's dive into it hello everyone I hope you're all doing well and safe and I can't wait to do the April plan with me setup with you guys and yeah I'm starting off with a cover spread and first of all i want to mention as always all the products that i'm using are linked down in the description box so go ahead and check them out if you're interested and if you have any questions about anything that i'm using always leave me a comment and just leave me a comment anyway i want to chat with you i want to talk to you um so yeah feel free to do that i would love to hear from you and yeah back to the cover spread i decided to go with tulips as i mentioned and i love tulips they're one of my favorite flowers they are super structured and also maybe because they remind me of the spring and so i decided to use them as my theme this month and so for the cover spread i decided to create a spray of tulips or a bouquet or whatever you want to call it uh, down in the right side of the spread and I wanted to scale it up to really make an impact and make it bold as I like it if you know me and so yeah that's what I decided to do and I also kept it kind of minimal in terms of line work and I started by using a thicker multi-liner or pen, whatever you have. I used uh, 0.5 for the actual flower and the rest I did with um, 0.1. So basically I wanted the flower to stand out and be a little bit thicker and bolder than the rest of the line types. And that's what you see me doing here. I go over all the major line work and I will add a little bit of uh, shading later on but um, that's what I'm doing now just getting my composition laid out and adding all the details and I also started with the hello spring on the left side and April simple header with gold I wanted to have some shine to it but not too much because I know I'm gonna add the color which is again new for me and now you see me starting to add the shading and i did uh, not a conventional type of shading i added lines to create um, some sort of a hatch that will create the shading if it makes any sense it's a lot more illustrated and um, less realistic and that's what i was going for so that's what you see me doing here and yeah obviously i added the shades to the parts where they will naturally be so the inside of the flower and the bottom of the leaves and it's just great variation it great movement and it's just i just love the hatching technique it, i think it's super cool and i often use it so you see me doing that here I really enjoyed it, it's very therapeutic for me and I speed it up for you so you, you're not going to get bored. So for the hatching technique I used a 0.05 pen, I just wanted it to be extra extra fine. Again, um, it's all about variation in line type and just makes it a lot more interesting that you have different types of lines and yeah, I really love how it turned out. I really feel like it completes the entire sketch and it's still very sketchy and not realistic exactly what I wanted it to be a lot more illustrated look and that's exactly what I was going for and also I added a little bit of shading in the bottom of the flower so yeah just basically all the natural places that it will naturally be shaded I added some lines and 
yeah, just create variation. That's all you need in order for um, a drawing to be interesting. So try to use few different um, line types and yeah, it will turn out a lot better, I promise. <laughs> and now when I was done with all the line work and all the details and everything that I wanted to add, I went over and picked up a blush color. I know, that's crazy. I am not used to using color, but I felt like spring gives me, I don't know, courage. So I decided to uh, be bold and try a little bit of color. And I love this blush color. It's so, so pretty. Um, a little feminine and still very neutral and yeah I don't think I will regret using it because most of the time I don't use color just because I don't want to be bored of it in the middle of the month but I feel like this sort of more neutral tone and it's still kind of muted I feel like it's still my style and it's not gonna overwhelm me in the middle of the month and I wanted just to add a little bit of a background to the Hello Spring and I really feel like it makes it pop this um, background and I did it as a circle and yeah I really love the effect that it gives it balanced really well with everything that's going on on the right side so I feel like it looks really complete and it balances off and then I started by adding a little bit more color to the actual sketch. So as I went back to the right side of the square to continue with the tulips, I went ahead and started with the actual flowers and the leaves because I originally started with the background, the negative space, which again, if you've seen my previous videos, I love coloring the negatives. I think it's a lot more sophisticated and it makes your drawing pop. And I feel like even if I left it at this stage, it will still be beautiful. I love that clean look, but this time I went all in and added a little bit more shading with more color. And I went with a lighter shade of peach, as you can see here. It's basically the same tone, but just lighter than the previous blush color. Just to give it a little bit more depth and just add another layer. And once I was done with that, I added a little bit of shading with a light one gray as well. When I was done adding the shading with the light peach and the gray, I went back with the darker blush color just to tie it all in and make it like really cohesive. And I really, really love that I added that touch because I feel like it makes this composition and this drawing a lot more complete. I love how it turned out. It made the shading a lot darker and bolder. I feel like it turned out exactly what I was hoping it will be and I was really happy with it. So yeah, moving on to the second spread, I went ahead and did the mood tracker, which I usually do a um, full spread of calendar. But because there are not a lot of things going on in April for me, I decided to keep it minimal. And so I combined the calendar and the mood and all the trackers into a one spread. Keep it minimal. Now that I have a baby, I also don't have a lot of time. And to be honest, I really love how it turned out. So I started off with the bouquet of tulips right in the bottom left. I love the movement of them going all the way to the right side. I just feel like it's super cool. And again, the whole idea of the mood tracker is to add some sort of color or maybe a pattern. And then when you look back at this month, you will see how you were doing basically. So my plan for this month is to color or have a sort of a pattern inside of the um, blank space where the actual leaf of the flowers are. So basically every day I will go ahead and um, fill in one of those flower leaves. And yeah, by the end of the month, I will have a variety of patterns or colors or whatever I will feel like at the same day. I don't really set a key for that because I feel like Every day I feel like I want to do something different. I don't want to limit myself. I want to be kind of creative about it and see how it will turn out in the end of the month. And I feel like in the past few months it turned out really cool. So I'm going to continue with that, not having a key, just do whatever I feel like at the same day. And yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I added a little bit of the shading and the lines just because I wanted it to look cohesive and the same as the first spread. 
and I really love how it turned out. It really feels like a complete drawing, even without me filling the flowers in. But yeah, it will be nice to look at at the end of the month. I'm super excited and I'm excited to start filling it in. Hopefully it will be a good month and I will be happy the entire month, you know? That's the hope for everyone, right? Once I was done preparing the mood tracker, I went to the right bottom side and fill in the calendar. I wanted to have a small calendar because I do really need um, to see the actual month in front of me. I'm a visual person, so it always helps. And I also added some extra trackers at the top because I'm going back to work. I wanted to really be intentional with my everyday tasks. And I obviously added some important dates lines on the on top of the calendar for me to add any specific um, information that I want to have for this month if I have an appointment or anything like that, a meeting. So for the next spread I want to have two separate lists. I'm such a list person, I need to write lists all the time, that's who I am, that's how I work and the most productive. So for me lists are a necessity, so I needed this month to have an important to-do list which I always have which is like a master list for the entire month and basically I fill in all those tasks that you don't have a specific date that you need to finish them off and just basically some things that you need to generally do and what I do is basically every week I take some tasks and spread them throughout the week and hopefully by the end of the month all of those tasks will be done and if I can't complete some of them I move them to the next month but yeah I really love using the monthly to-do list I found it very useful for me and the other list is more personal to me it's basically my house rental priorities so right now if you've seen my previous videos I moved into a new house, basically it's not new, it's a fixer-upper, a hundred years old fixer-upper and my husband and I are renovating basically the entire house. So every week, every month we are planning to work on a different project. So for me it's all about priorities, um, that's exactly what this list is about, just to list our priorities and things are changing so it's nice to have some sort of documentation about it, I feel like it's gonna help me a lot. And I obviously had to add those tulips so I decided to have them kind of like popping from behind and have some leaves and flowers coming out of the frame that I originally created. And obviously I added some line work to make it again cohesive and the same as the other spreads. And did the same thing as I did before, added the dark pitch in the background. I didn't have a lot of background here but I did add it and then used the lighter pitch and the gray and then the darker pitch again where the really darkest part of the shading will be. And yeah, I really love this one. It's simple, but it's fun. I love the composition and how it turned out. And lastly, I added those lines, which if you know me, I usually add these where I have my lists. And it's with my favorite light gray, warm gray marker. I'm gonna list everything down in the description box for you if you're interested. And I always feel like it adds so much to the spread. I love how it turned out. And yeah, that's about it for this one. It really completes the spread and it's just exactly what I needed to finish it off. And now it's time to talk about Skillshare, which is the sponsor of today's video. And I'm so excited to be working with them again. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like ourselves, explore new skills, deepen existing passion, and get lost in creativity. I love Skillshare. You can find so many classes about art, about illustration, photography, everything that's creative you can find over there. I already took some really important productivity classes, which helped me a lot, but this time I decided to try something about photography. I'm taking a course now, which is the still life photography, capturing stories of everyday objects objects at home and it's by Sean Delton. He is a travel and lifestyle photographer and I already learned a lot about computer and everything that you need in order to create an amazing composition and I just really enjoy it so far. 
I love that Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, which is pretty amazing. The first 1,000 that will click the link down in my description box will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And yeah, I highly recommend you trying it. You won't regret it. And now it's time to move on to the flip through. Thank you very much for watching i really truly appreciate it and if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel i would love to see you again in the future and yeah check out the link for skillshare down in the description box because i'm sure you love it as much as i do it's amazing and yeah that's about it for this one i'll see you again in my next video bye